Now, as far as going about and trying to help someone who has Babesia, Babesia, when you look at the research and some of the original stuff done with Babesia, is all compared to malaria, which is probably a more famous red blood cell parasite. Now, the problem, if you pull up CDC Babesia, or you pull up infectious disease books on Babesia, here's what you'll basically find. Babesia is like malaria, but it doesn't kill anyone. So let's move on to a new topic. That's, that's the whole thing. So um, we tell people Babesia is not deadly like malaria is. And unfortunately, we find things that make you miserable but don't kill you do not get enough attention in this, you know, in this country. So Babesia is, in, in general speaking, not deadly, not lethal, but it really can affect your, your level of function for people. Uh, obviously makes them feel terrible, can, can be disabling. So when Babesia infects the red blood cell, you do need something that's anti-parasite. What a lot of doctors do, both herbally or medical doctors, is they basically use malaria protocols for Babesia. Now, the two most prominent drugs for Babesia are based on the herb Artemisia. So this is very common. A lot of drugs have a root somewhere with a traditional use in an herb, but um, a lot of, of uh, uh, doctors and natural people will use, the, will use the herb Artemisia. This is also called Wormwood. Very famous, probably the most famous herb for Babesia. There's a good book by James Schaller on this, and Buner talks about it in his protocol. But you're gonna do something to try and kill the parasite. Whether it's a medication or it's one of these herbs, you, can, you need to do something to try to kill the Babesia parasite. This makes sense to most people. And the key is because parasite, you need something different than what you're doing to help kill Lyme disease. So Artemisia is really common for people to add in. Uh, cryptolepsis is another anti, uh, uh, herbal anti-parasite that people will use. Uh, specifically, this is, this is Buner's favorite herb. He's a very famous Lyme person, so a lot of doctors will use cryptolepsis. And then neem's another one we use in the office. Um, you can use, this is not the only things that you can use, but you basically need to do something that's antiparasitic and you need it to be in the blood antiparasitic. Now, a couple of deal breakers in, in the office. So if you have low vitamin A, it doesn't work. If you have low iron, it won't work. So you need to be checking vitamin A or giving vitamin A or checking iron at the same time. Also, these, these things work by creating free radicals. That's actually some of what Babesia is doing is it injures nitric oxide in order to take away the immune system's punch because nitric oxide is something your immune system uses to combat it. Well, nitric oxide, if you Google it, you're gonna find all this blood flow stuff because nitric oxide is also famous for, for helping your blood vessels function. So Babesia starts to cause circulation problems because it's messing up nitric oxide with your immune system and it's messing it up with your blood flow system. Well, nitric oxide, so you can do things to help boost nitric oxide to try and counterpunch what Babesia is doing. Um, vitamin C works really well, uh, citrulline works well. This is where you'll come in things like ginkgo, but it's gonna be all things that help blood flow because they're helping this nitric oxide. So you're trying to counter what Babesia is doing. Some people really need this, other people it's not as big of a deal for them. But also anything that really takes out antioxidants creates a huge problem. So if you're low in antioxidants like vitamin C, what happens is you go to try to do a Babesia protocol and it's terrible. You feel awful. You try to take Artemisia, you try to take Cryptolepsis, or you try to take some of these medications and you go, oh man, I thought I felt bad. I feel even worse now. And your doctors will go, well, it's a die-off effect or it's a Herx effect or it's a detox reaction. It's okay, power through. And you get people who literally go, I, I can't. These side effects are unbearably bad. So what we find is if you're going through a Babesia protocol, what's hard is there's some things that can screw it up so it just doesn't work. There's other things that screw it up that make your side effects much worse. Now the most common reason why you have low antioxidants that we find in the office is, um, so if I can't fix it with just by giving you vitamin C or vitamin E, I become suspicious of chemicals or heavy metals. So now you have Lyme and Babesia, and I can't get at the Lyme and Babesia because they're kind of protecting each other, and I'm trying to go after the Babesia. Can't go after the Babesia because you have heavy metals, which screw up your antioxidants, which make this an absolute mess. 
So this is an example of some people come in and they have something really simple, but other people come in and in order to unwind the knot, you have to do not just Lyme and Babesia protocols, you have to layer it in with antioxidants or nitric oxide support, or even a, you have to back up and do heavy metals before you can get at that. And this is one reason why I think also for people who are doing some of these kind of uh, pre-packaged programs, when you get into someone who kind of has all these things, I tell people you have three or four strings together in a knot, and I'm trying to figure out which one to pull to help loosen your knot or undo it. But BC is probably a prime example of, yes, I know some people do something very simple and it works, but there's all kinds of reasons why other people that really, you know, falls short and doesn't work for them because there's just too many things that are, that are tumbling around blocking it. Another thing that Babesia does that makes it harder is it weakens your Th1 side of your immune system, which is all your killers. So I tell people it takes away like the, the weapons of your immune system and gives them all fun noodles. So you're trying to kill things with fun noodles rather than with, you know, legitimate weapons. And what your immune system does is it requests more soldiers with fun noodles which means it creates a lot of inflammation trying to fix it, but you, you need to boost the TH1 system with a lot of patients. You need to take away the fun noodles and give them back you know, swords and guns and these things that actually, they actually kill things. Now this also works really well for some people or is a bad idea. So some people, particularly if you have autoimmunity, if I boost the TH1 system, the problem is, is it'll help you kill the Babesia, but if you're autoimmune against your thyroid, autoimmune against your intestines, autoimmune, if you have this autoimmune complication, which about a third of the patients we have with Lyme disease do, when you boost the TH1 system, it can make that autoimmune get worse. So Babesia is, is probably the co-infection we see that has the most traps. It has the most, well, you need to do this, but if you have this, it'll screw up, or but if you have this, it'll screw up. But if, so there's, Babesia is, I think, one of the hardest ones to navigate without a guide because there's so many landmines that you can step on.